It's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and pass the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, you are designing a new VPC network that will route traffic to networks in your company's private data center. You want to ensure that your VPC can support high availability in the future. The data center team requires you to use a routing protocol that can dynamically fail over if there is a link failure in the data center. Your management requires your design to use only native cloud services. Which routing protocol should you use? So there are a few key parts of this question. One, there are going to be two different networks. This is a hybrid setup. And you want to ensure that if the path or the route taken by traffic in one direction fails, another one should come up or it should be available for that data to traverse a different route, even if one is blocked. And of course, we only want to use native cloud services. So in the requirements analysis, we can see that there are multiple autonomous networks. Each of these networks could have different machines going down, coming up. It could have different sub networks being created or deleted. And these have to continue to be in communication. Even when there is a link failure on say one route. So there should be an easy failover that reroutes traffic through another route. And we only want to use the services that are available within Google Cloud. In answering some of these questions, the first thing I do is, which are the ones that can immediately eliminate? So let's look at option D. Option D is static routing. Now static routing has multiple problems that do not work well for our scenario. It is a very simple way of routing traffic. However, it does not work when we want a dynamic network. So in the case of a static route, or when you're doing static routing, you have to create and maintain a routing table. When the topology of the network changes, if say a new subnetwork is created or another one is removed, this new network or new subnetwork is not advertised to the rest of the uh, networks, which essentially means that they are not discoverable until somebody updates the routing table. And that has to be done manually. Since that is the case, we can't have these systems being immediately discovered. Also, a static routing does not automatically reroute traffic if say one of it is blocked or one of the links have failed. These are suitable for small networks and stable topologies, but not for the kind of network that we want in our design and configuration. So for all these reasons, I can immediately eliminate static routing as an option for this requirement. Now, in going towards the others, let's differentiate between what is static routing and what is dynamic routing. So dynamic routing is the ability for these networks or subnetworks to discover each other as and when they come and go. Within that, there are two ways in which you can um, separate these uh, routing protocols. One is an exterior gateway protocol. This is typically used to exchange routing information between autonomous systems. So these are two completely different networks, probably managed separately, and these want to communicate. And these are usually across, say, the internet. An interior gateway protocol, on the other hand, is used for exchanging routing information between gateways within a system. Okay. So the other one was between autonomous systems, where this, uh, whereas the interior gateway protocol is used within an autonomous system. And this is ideally used, say, within a corporate LAN, where it is under the control of, say, one uh, system administrator, and they can control um, 
which subnetworks come up and which ones are not. So when we are working across a hybrid system, say one is a part of uh, Google Cloud and another part is on-prem, then these become two autonomous systems and they require a exterior gateway protocol. Now, with this information, let's figure out of the options given, which is an interior uh, gateway protocol and which is an exterior routing protocol. The ones that come on the interior will be RIP and OSPF and they use different protocols to do this. Whereas the exterior protocol that we have in our list is the BGP protocol or the border gateway protocol. Now answering the rest of the question becomes easy. RIP like we saw is an interior gateway protocol. It does support dynamic routing. However, it is usually used within an autonomous system and not between separate networks. So we can eliminate B. And so also we can eliminate option C, which is OSPF. Because even though this is a dynamic routing protocol, it is an interior gateway protocol that is used to connect systems within an autonomous system. The only one that is left, therefore, is option A, BGP or the border gateway protocol. Now, this is an exterior gateway protocol. It supports dynamic routing, which means it allows these networks to be discovered as and when they change. It also supports high availability and failover because it has dynamic routing. Moreover, as the last part of the question requires us to use native cloud services, Cloud router within Google Cloud uses the BGP protocol. And therefore, this becomes the correct solution for us to use in this particular requirement. All right, now it's time for you to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Go ahead, do that right now, because there's loads of great content coming up for learning Google Cloud and preparing for the certifications. Mm -hmm.